I finished my first Garb August read. Maybe my only one, but I did at least participate. Hello and welcome back to Bookish and welcome to my Saturday Hodgepodge, my weekly wrap up of all things booktube, bookish, bookish, reading, writing, whatever I want to talk about. Uh, so today I thought I'd start off with a quick review of a book I did read for Garb August, and that was This Bird Has Flown by Susanna Hoffs. Now technically this qualifies as a week three Garb August read because Susanna Hoffs was the lead singer, songwriter from the 80s uh, <clears throat> group The Bangles, uh, and she counts as a famous person. I believe this is her first novel, uh, and I read it in part because of, you know, uh, infatuation with the Bengals from a much younger period of time in my life, uh, and because I, I heard it was coming out through social media, and I thought, well, this is a book I'll read, and I'll call it a Garb August read. This may not be entirely fair uh, to Ms. Hoffs, but I did read it, and I wanted to give you a really quick review of the book, so if you were interested, you know, you might think about reading it. So I'm going to start off by saying that I found the book to be entertaining, and in and of itself, that is a quality I think that is too often uh, dismissed uh, here by people, largely not me, on BookTube. The book was entertaining. Was it perfect? Far from perfect, but entertaining. So let me tell you the, really quickly give you a, a synopsis. Okay, so the book follows uh, a kind of middle age ish not quite middle-aged woman named Jane Smart, who was a uh, pop star, kind of a one-hit wonder, about 10 years before the events of the book take place, which take place in, in modern times, and kind of uh, her struggles with her, you know, failing career, attempt to maintain relationships with uh, her family, a failed romantic relationship, uh, issues involving her brother and father, her manager, and it takes us from Los Angeles to uh, London to Oxford, to Paris at one point, to the French Riviera. It kind of goes all over the place and it kind of touches on all kinds of things. But essentially, Jane is trying to come to grips with the loss of this relationship, which, you know, uh, she thought was really important to her. Uh, her fading music career or her gone music career, which seems to perhaps be on the verge of being resurrected, but at what cost? And then her romance with a man that she, an Englishman that she met on a plane. And it is all very kind of uh, interwoven and a little bit fraught from time to time, but I think on the whole, for the most part, fun and entertaining. Uh, I would say that the character of Jane Smart is clearly not Susanna Hobbs, who is married and who is, no offense Susanna, who is older than the main character in this novel, but certainly I think Susanna Hobbs experience as a pop star, as a rock and roll star in the 1980s, uh, informed a lot of the stuff about the music industry and performing and concerts uh, that appear in this book. Uh, and I thought she was an engaging character, funny, charming most of the time, you know, and, and somebody who I found myself rooting for uh, almost immediately in the book. All that said, the book is a little too long. The plot is a little bit too circuitous. There are a few too many characters, particularly a few too many potential love interests for Jane. There's a little bit too much stopping and starting uh, in terms of the romance for my taste. Uh, there are, I think, kind of gratuitously characters thrown in for perhaps diversity points. Uh, and Jane's relationship with her uh, agent seems to be really unusual. So unusual that I have to imagine in some ways it's drawn from real life. Uh, but it all really kind of breaks down to this, uh, or comes down to this romance she's having with this Oxford uh, professor who she met on the plane and she kind of falls quickly in this relationship. And they both, both bring baggage to the relationship and neither one of them shares with the other, which leads to kind of hurt feelings and, you know, problems in the relationship. But, you know, being a mostly a romance novel, it kind of all works out in the end. I think that Ms. Hoffs is a little bit too eager to show off her literary chops with references to all kinds of works of literature. I think that, you know, some of her characters are a little bit too caricaturish, including some of the uh, other Oxford Dons that Jane meets while she's, you know, involved in this romance. Um, but I, like I said, overall I found the story to be engaging, entertaining, and, you know, like I said, I think that's a, that's a pretty positive thing. So that is my Garb August read, 
uh, so far. I might still get to Pride and Prejudice and Zombies a little later in the month, but to be honest with you, my reading has gone really slowly. So the rest of my reading this week has been preoccupied primarily with either reading or not reading one of two books. First of all, I finished The Spur of the Flown because it was going to be returned uh, through the library app. I did get a good chunk of the way in collected works by Lydia Sandgren, translated from the Swedish by um, Agnes Brume. Uh, and I really, really like this book, and I wish I could tell you why, uh, but I'm not sure. I just find the topic, which is about an um, artist uh, and his friend who's a publisher and the publisher's family and relationship and friendship, I just find it to be really engaging. I find the writing to be really, you know, in my opinion, kind of fresh and the characters to be really interesting and engaging. And I am about 140 pages in, which isn't very far in a 600-page book that I plan on finishing by the end of this month, but uh, I'm really, really liking it. I'm also supposed to be reading uh, Absalom, Absalom as part of Faulkner in August. I did meet the first reading deadline goal, which was last Sunday, to get through chapter three. I have not yet, and it's Friday, started on chapters four and five, which in and of themselves are about, I want to say, nearly 100 pages, so I'm behind on that. But the discussion on Voxer has been uh, great, and I, I haven't gotten to any other reading, in part because I traveled uh, over the weekend, as you uh, probably know if you watched last Saturday, to you know visit my father-in-law and my daughter and son-in-law. And then I traveled middle of this week to go uh, visit my mom on Wednesday uh, and Thursday. And so I've just kind of not had this great reading week other than finishing uh, this bird is flown. So I'm hoping to get back on track with reading now that I'm just down to two books that I feel compelled to read right, right now. Uh, in addition to that, uh, as you know, I, I'm in the process of reviving my manuscript uh, for publication, and I'll leave just a little kind of vlog thing about that right here. And also this week, I did want to point out or just mention that two, uh, I think, music legends died relatively recently. Most recently was Robbie Robertson uh, from the band. Uh, Robertson was a songwriter, guitar player for the band. If you watch this channel, you know that there are a lot of songs by the band that I really like. So I'm going to leave a link to Ophelia by the band down below, which... Robertson at least played some role in writing and performing. And then also Sinead O'Connor died uh, not long ago. You know, truly a gifted person, a courageous person, I think, in calling out uh, abuses uh, within the church that she belonged to and really uh, hurt her career. But I think, you know, has emerged from that as, as somebody uh, who was uh, right uh, and somebody to be admired. And her the favorite song I have by her, uh, other than Nothing Compares to You, is a song I may have actually linked in a video before, but that is uh, The Foggy Dew, uh, which is a song written about the 1916 Easter Uprising, and she performs it with the, the Chieftains, the Irish kind of folk band. Uh, and I'll leave a link to 
both those songs down below. Anyway, there you go. There is my really quick, I hope, Saturday hodgepodge for this week. I look forward to your comments in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching.